something the Holy Spirit just wants to unleash on his church, wants this to be clear in his church. Previous week, we, we looked at Matthew chapter 4, and we considered the temptation of Jesus Christ. We also went into chapter 4, verses 18 down. Yeah, from verse 18 to 22, you don't have to put it up. Matthew chapter 4, verses 80 to 22, it speaks of Jesus gathering his disciples one by one, miraculously, supernaturally. Verse 23 following, I, you can put that up from verse 23 on. I want to read from Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 on. By now, a few of the disciples have joined Christ. This is in the background of where Christ has uh, overcome uh, those temptations that the devil had brought upon him. He has overcome those temptations and has begun to draw his disciples to him. And then we read from verse 23, Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 on. It says, Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease. You know, sometimes I read these portions, I wonder if I, you know, really paid attention. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? That this is so clearly put and emphasized. Proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Right. Double emphasis. That as he went about preaching the gospel, he healed the sick. He healed every kind of Today, this is what the headlines is all about. One kind of disease. It tells us in this passage that Jesus healed every. Jesus healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. The news about him spread throughout all Syria. They brought to him all who were ill. Isn't that interesting? The news about him spread throughout all, verse 24 says, all Syria, and they brought to him all who were. So what was the news? He's a, he's a healer. Praise the Lord. That he's a healer. And then miracles take place. That's my prayer for church. That's my prayer for the body of Christ. That we reflect our Savior. That people find healing in the church. Of every kind of disease and sickness. The news spread about him throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all who were ill. Those suffering with various diseases and pains. Hallelujah. Various diseases and pains. Demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. He, and he healed them. Jesus healed them. The name of Jesus is authority. I don't know if this evening you, you have some sort of pain. The scripture mentions pain. You have some sort of pain. In Jesus' name, may that pain be relieved, healed. Thank you, Jesus. Where Jesus is, all these things get affected. I want to read the list. <laughs> I want to read this victorious, glorious list. Where Jesus is. If Jesus is in your house, these things get affected. These things get affected. Because the people brought, yes, from the different regions, they brought people closer to Jesus so that these things get affected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those suffering, they brought to him all who were ill. Those suffering with various diseases and pains. Demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Praise the Lord. You know, if you, uh, if you come for a fellowship, if you sit for your quiet time, if there is a pain, let this set you free. If there is a pain, Jesus is concerned. Jesus cares for you. If there is a pain, Jesus cares for you. If there is a situation, uh, a struggle with 
you know, a, a problem with a, a, a demonic condition, Jesus cares. Jesus cares. Jesus cares. <sighs> Praise the Lord. And he healed him. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea. It's like reading the end of, uh, end, end of the Gospels or the end of the book of Acts. It's, it's like, it's incredible. It's large crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is our Lord. This is our Lord. <clears throat> After having won this spiritual battle, heavenly protection and provision are manifest in Jesus' lives. The enlisting of the disciples take place. Jesus begins to convey the, the kingdom of God. He's preaching the kingdom of God. And then he delivers upon mankind his precious word, the Sermon on the Mount. Hallelujah. The Sermon on the Mount. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. The Sermon on the Mount is a continuation of the spiritual warfare. Now, if you read Matthew chapter 4 properly, you will understand that after the temptations, Jesus is just proceeding in victory after victory. The battle has begun. The battle is begun. And there is no relenting here. Jesus doesn't take a break for three and a half years. Suddenly you realize that reading Matthew is this spiritual battle that transpires and the victorious march of Jesus towards the cross. Glory. The victorious march of Jesus towards the cross. The Sermon on the Mount is spiritual warfare. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Listen carefully, church. You got to um, connect with spiritual realities. You got to connect with spiritual realities. Too long we are wa walking in physical realities. We need to start to see with the eyes of our hearts. We need to see with spiritual eyes. Understand what's going on. The Sermon on the Mount is spiritual warfare of the highest order. If you open your Bible and start to read the words of Christ, I want you, to know, want you to know that around you is spiritual warfare taking place. That those words of Christ have the power to bring down the works of Satan in your house, in your neighborhood, in your nation. Hallelujah. After the temptation of Christ, the king of the kingdom of heaven has unleashed spiritual warfare. The destruction of the kingdom of darkness was well and truly at full swing, just inaugurated. In fact, you know, if I were to imagine what was going on, uh, it's like pandemonium in the kingdom of darkness. It's confusion and chaos in the enemy's camp. Hmm. The Sermon on the Mount has sent millions. I'm going to repeat this just uh, so that you get it clearly. The Sermon on the Mount has sent millions of demons fleeing from millions of homes through the centuries. Hallelujah. It unravels the very fabric of the kingdom of darkness. If you start to understand and read and meditate on what Christ unleashed, that's the Sermon on the Mount, it begins to unravel the grip of Satan on you. Grip of Satan on your house. Grip of Satan in your workplace. It unravels the very fabric of the kingdom of darkness. The first person to coin the frame Sermon on the Mount is St. Augustine. That's how it's, it's stuck through the ages. Sermon on the Mount. Because it says in Matthew chapter 5, this is what it says, verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him 
and he opened his mouth. Glory. <laughs> and he opened his mouth. Praise God. Today, my life is radically changed because Jesus opened his mouth. Praise God. After he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and began to teach. Oof. See, understand. Understand that you have victory by opening your mouth and speaking the word of Christ. That is what he has set before us. This is the example he has left us. And um, you need to open your mouth and speak the word of God. When you say, blessed are the poor in spirits, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'm telling you, a state of blessedness. A state of blessedness. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You will experience comfort. Blessed are the gentle, they shall inherit the earth. They are recently speaking to somebody, and uh, we were speaking about how people are so, you know, caught up in, in fighting each other for property. And, uh, and <laughs> in the conversation, um, so the Sermon on the Mount showed up. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the whole earth. In this, what do you need to do? Stay meek, submitted to the Holy Spirit. You will inherit the whole earth. This is just incredible. Blessed are those, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for, you, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This entire sermon stretches from chapter 5 on um, is the most famous passage of scripture. Some say after the Ten Commandments. I'm not too sure. Uh, it could go either way. Yes. The most famous passage of scripture. It is uh, the longest recorded sermon of Jesus. Praise God. Consider the most beloved, the best known and uh, as I was studying and reading through it, I also echo with this statement, the least understood and the hardest to obey. There's an incredible passage of scripture, but I want you to know, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to get into it till we, um, till next, next time we come together for Bible study. But I want you to know, uh, You've been hearing this teaching in the church about the gospel. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit's leading us into the gospel. And uh, uh, I believe that you're going to see some tremendous miracles. Um, that's what the Lord has uh, in store for you as you dig your feet into the scripture. And understanding of the new covenant, understanding of who Jesus is as you... Man, I'm, I'm so excited for what God has in store. Um, things are going to change. This, this Bible study is going to change uh, things around you. Um, um, there's going to be miracles taking place. See, the very uh, context of this, um, prior to this is miracles. The context after this is miracles. It's amazing. And um, all around it is... is um, the kingdom of darkness uh, is, being, is being uprooted and um, in the hearts of men, in the lives of people. And that is what is going to transpire. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. 
Recently, my daughter um, was, um, <laughs> Paul is smiling. <laughs> she was uh, doing something in, in, in the classroom. And today's classroom is basically, you've got this um, Google Meet and she's there. And, and um, she was, um, you know, taking the liberties of the online studies, you know, where the teacher, you can switch off your camera and and uh, she's busy doing something that is very inappropriate for a classroom, you know. So I happened to just walk past and I saw her and um, I said, what are you doing? I said, the camera, she's telling me the camera's off. I said, the camera may be off, but do unto others. I said, uh, how would you feel if you're the teacher and this is what you are doing? And then I told her to memorize the entire Sermon on the Mount. She had this, <laughs> and uh, she did it. And um, I believe that it will change our lives. It will change our lives. She memorized that entire Sermon on the Mount. And I'm encouraging you, yeah, there are just that many scriptures to memorize that um, you would memorize this entire portion. As we get into the Bible study, it's going to bless you. Memorize it. Memorize every verse. Yeah, so we will talk more about that as we go along. Let us pray. Father, thank you for uh, all that we consider today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you desire in us a spirit of excellence <clears throat> when it comes to the Word. You desire in us a, a, um, an eagerness for your Word. Lord, that we are examining everything, no matter what the source is, that we, we examine where is this coming from? Is it in line with the scriptures? That we examine everything through the scriptures, through the word of God. Thank you for the things that you have taught us. Even as we spoke about uh, the series, The Chosen, may we apply these principles to various mediums, Lord, that they do not have sway on us like the scriptures. That the one overwhelming force in our lives is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God. That our minds are constantly, every imagination, every thought is brought to obedience to the Word of Christ, to the Word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for um, the spiritual realities that we are all engaged in. Lord, you have been ministering to us to awaken to spiritual realities, that we begin to live in the Spirit. That, Lord, you would open our eyes to see what the kind of warfare we are engaged in and what are the weapons of our warfare, warfare what, are, what is the complete armor of God, that we are found wearing the entirety of the armor of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as we open ourselves, Lord, to the greatest literature the world has ever seen, the precious Word of God. Teach us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to settle a hundred issues. Before you even have those issues, the Lord will settle it. Come under the, the Word of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have already done. Thank you, Father, that there is healings that have taken place to the, through the time of prayer and study that we've had. We thank you that miracles have happened. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the same. You have not changed. You are the same Jesus. The same Jesus we read in Matthew chapter 4 is the same Jesus that is in our homes. That is our Savior. That is our Shepherd. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for teaching us, Abba. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. amen.